Hey everyone, I'm Molly. I'm a product designer and the creator of UI Prep. Let me introduce you to the latest version of the design system. It's been a lot of big updates, especially with Figma's new color and number variables. So let's jump in and take a look at a few of the pages. Here we have the welcome page with some really helpful resources to things like different plugins and articles I think would be helpful, as well as a tutorial like this one to help you get up and running really quickly, especially with these new variables, using your styles and the components. Next, we have a design work area. If you're on the Figma free plan, I recommend using this section to create and store all of your designs. If you're on a pro plan, I recommend using this section to simply test out and explore how your components are going to look and work in different layouts. So here we can see some examples of a few different components being used in one larger layout. Let's zoom in and take a look. You can see how all these are going to kind of fit together and play together in one layout. We can also test out the different variable modes, so light mode and dark mode. You can do that from the page level over here. We can switch from the default light mode to dark mode. And we can see how all the different components and designs change to adapt to that mode. Next, let's take a look at the variables. So we have color variables and number variables. On this first page, we have all of our different colors for both light mode and dark mode. These were all pulled in from the Adobe Spectrum framework. So really strong in usability and accessibility. There's a lot of really, really rich documentation on the Adobe Spectrum website that you can take a look at. And if you look here, we can see that while it looks like we're using quite a few colors, we're actually using a really small amount of these. So only the colors that have this box around them are actually being used in the current system. So we can see that all of the 100 colors are being used as a weak background. We can also see that all these 700s are being used for data and the 900, 1,000 and 1,100 are being used for things like borders, icons, text, backgrounds, things like that. We can see the same over here for our gray colors. Now let's take a quick look at the actual variables themselves. Over here, we have a few different collections. There's first a primitive collection. We have all of the colors we just walked through. So these grays and these blues, so on and so forth. We only have about five of each for most of the colors. And all of these primitive colors are being used to power the semantic colors, which are the colors that we're actually using while we're designing. Let's head over to the semantic collection. Now we can see all the colors we're actually going to be pulling in as we design. So all the colors we might use for text, background, or an icon. We can see that these colors are pulling in those primitive colors. So instead of seeing our blue hex code, we're going to see this other token, light, blue, and 900. Let's be consistent across all of these similar types of tokens. Think it's really easy to make really sweeping updates just by updating the primitive collection. We have far fewer things to update. By just updating these five colors in the primitive collection, we're gonna make really huge changes to all of our tokens. We're gonna be updating our text, our icons, our backgrounds, everything that might be using this blue. blue. We're only gonna have to update right here. We can see in this primitive collection, we also have our light colors as well as our different dark colors. Next, let's take a look at our number of variables. Here we have all the documentation for how we might use numbers in the system for things like our component sizes, icon sizes, padding, and spacing. Then kind we can see these in here in the collection for numbers. It's really easy to keep all of our sizing and spacing consistent using these uh, different variables. So we can use the component sizing for things like our buttons and inputs, make sure they're always the same height. For our icons, they're always one of these four options. Our spacing, so it's really helpful for figuring out how should space things, especially using auto layout, the corner radiuses, and breakpoints you might be using. So again, you can update the corners of all of your components and all of your designs simply by updating, for example, this one base variable for your corner radius. Over here, we have documentation for all the different styles we're using. So you have color style for things like gradients and images, typography styles, elevations, and grids and layouts. Now take a look at some of my favorite components. We can see here that each component is living on its own page. This is going to make everything really organized and easy to find in the assets panel. Let's jump in and take a peek at the button component. We can see here we have a description for that component, the main components being used, as well as all the documentation for the rest of your team, your developers to really easily see how everything's being used. Let's take a look at these buttons. 
One thing you might notice is that these buttons are structured a little differently in this latest version of the kit. We're pulled apart into slightly smaller component variable sets to make them easier to use and find the assets panel. So let's pull one in. We have our buttons here. We can really easily see a really clean, simple list of all the buttons available. Let's try one in. And now we can configure this button using the different properties. So we can change the size from large to small, the state, the label, the whether or not there's a left and right icon, and what that icon is. Now let's take a look at a slightly more complicated component, the button group. So we see the button group, the page has a similar structure, although we have the addition of these atoms. So these atoms are smaller components that were built and are now nested inside of the larger component. So these small individual buttons for the button group are nested inside of this larger button group here. Let's drag in an example. So you can configure some things at the top level, which is this component here, the size, and how many buttons are being shown. And then down here, what makes it really special is that we have these smaller nested components inside that are exposed and we can now edit them from the same panel view. So we have this first button here and we can change the state, the icon, the text to whatever we need to show. For example, let's have this one be selected. We can do all that without having to drill down into the component and make it confusing to designers about what can or should be updated. Next, take a look at the input. See, in this page, you have quite a few options for our inputs. Let's try in just one example. Let's do our dropdown that can have multiple inputs. So again, we can configure the top level here so we can change the state, let's say from default to active. Once active, we're going to have that additional component show here of the dropdown. We can change the size. Change the state again to fill. And here we're going to see all the different chips from that selected state. We even show an error state, which will both highlight the input as well as add an additional message down here, which we can then edit here. Now let's take a look at my very favorite component, the data table. We have our two layers, and we'll find the table page. Here we can see all the possible columns for our table, as well as a few templates that we can use. So I'm going to grab an instance of this table template. I'll go ahead and detach it since this is a template and it's meant to be detached. And now let's make a few customizations. Let's go in and select all of the different columns we have. First thing we can do is control how many rows there are. The style, so zebra or line and whether or not there's a header. And we can also go in and edit each individual column. So let's say this very first one, we want to update the type of column is from text to say number or badge or maybe status. But we can also choose to have this column be a fixed width. So it'll always have enough room for possible future content. So this column is now a fixed width. And the rest are going to remain as fill container. So this table is really dynamic and can fit any layout. So there you go. That's a small sample of what's included in the latest version of the UI Prep Design System and UI Kit. As you can see, it's going to help you save a lot of time on your next project and teach you a few Figma best practices along the way.